Good morning. I'm Leonard Hamlin, Canon Missioner of the Washington National Cathedral. And on behalf of our Dean, as well as the Bishop, it is my privilege and blessing to be able to welcome you to this morning's service of prayer and morning devotions on Wednesday, January 12th, 2022. For those who I haven't had an opportunity to express a Happy New Year, I wish and of course extend all of the best for all of the days that are before us and that we might live the fullness of the day that is present with us. So on this day, won't you join me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we come so ever grateful for who you are and your presence with us. It is once again you've given us opportunity to gather together in this moment that we might be mindful of the blessings that are before us and the days that are ahead of us. So now, we ask that your spirit would fill this moment, that we might be united together. We ask that we might see a little bit further, hear a little bit clearer, strengthen our hands that we might work a little stronger, that someone might know that we've been with you and that we might be the agents of good news that you've called us to be. So now fill us that we might be prepared for all of the places that you will send us. This we ask in the wonderful name of Jesus and for his sake, amen. It is a blessing to be with you this morning. And certainly as we turn to this morning's gospel, our reading comes to us out of the gospel of Mark, the very first chapter. And we hear the 29th through the 39th verses. And in Mark's gospel, we find these words. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. Amen. Certainly in reading this particular passage, there are so many points that seem to jump out immediately right away in the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. Certainly this would have been a focus for some, the grab as we're in this time where many are struggling from fevers and how that would be done. In this, as we walk through very quickly Mark's gospel, we could be drawn right away to how the crowd reacted, the crowd and their coming, uh, bringing all of the sick that are there. But on this morning, I would have us focus in on Jesus' response to all of the crowd. Jesus' response to his disciples when, he, when they told him everyone was looking for him. Certainly, many of us would have expected a different reaction. His response to say, where are they? Let me go to them. Let me respond. But Jesus reacts very quickly and says, let's go to a different place and town. We're living in an age where popularity has become more important than purpose. I was caught by this as I read this because Jesus did not give in to the crowds and the shouts and uh, being considered perhaps popular and likable. As we seek to grow in our faith and our witness, I often hear a great deal of conversation about certain elements or aspects 
that are needed to have a great life. If you listen carefully, when many talk about having a great life, how it's changed perhaps through the years and how there are distractions that get in the way of what many of us might call foundational or eternal aspects that are really needed for our character. When we listen to many individuals talk about making a great life, they talk about position, they talk about power, they talk about authority, they talk about finances, having great houses and cars. I could go on and the list could continue when we talk about things in life. What is often secondary though, when we listen to talking about having a great life and listening to others in their conversation, in the twos, the threes, and in groups, What is lacking is hearing people talk about what's really needed is love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I could go on, but those are the things that many of us are recognized are missing in the world that we're living in today. And they're looking around for examples of that. They're looking around to to find that. And it will not just be the reading of words that will help them to find it. There are many who have said, and I read somewhere a long time ago, where if I remember it correctly, one person saying that 100 people may hear the Bible read Out of that, 99 will go and read it for themselves. But but many will pay attention to the Christian. That will be the only Bible that they will ever read. On this day, I remind you and encourage us to recognize that we ought not be seeking popularity but we've been called to carry good news in a time like this. And we're called, as Jesus did with his disciples, to continue to press forward. Jesus could have stayed right there just to hear the shouts. He could have stayed right there just because the people were looking for him and made it about himself. But he says, I have work to do. And what's exciting for me and what is challenging for me at the same time is recognizing that we are all called for a purpose, and as disciples built to keep moving forward with the pandemic, the challenges that are around us, the things that we're experiencing, it is easy to get stuck and to say that this is too much and to stay right here, but we have to press forward because through Jesus, we've been built that way. We're built to be, as many have said, like airplanes, to take flight with our spiritual wings but not just because we have the wings and the spirit that can lift us, but truth is we're built to keep pressing forward. I'm reminding of that every time I get on a plane and although it's been limited, but every time I get on one, I'm reminded that when the plane is ready to leave the gate, planes are not built to go in reverse. They're pushed back because they're only built to go forward. As we look in life, we're built to keep going forward. And on this day, I hope that you will not let the push that is happening at times push you in the wrong direction. But no matter what happens, you recognize that I'm built to go forward. Jesus had good news and he kept moving. And today, I pray that we too will continue to move. Amen. I invite you to join me in that prayer that Jesus prayed with his disciples. Whenever I meet you in the morning, and whether I'm meeting you in the morning or midday with the advent of technology or in the evening, I invite you to pray that prayer every time we gather, that we are reminded how Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We keep moving forward. And in that reading this morning in Mark, what made the difference was prayer. Jesus prayed, and it kept him from being stuck or giving in to the popularity that people wanted to place on him. But he lived his purpose. And on this day, I pray that we are living ours. And so as we pray, I share with you as we get ready to go about our business and purpose for this day. My father often kept this prayer in his wallet, and now I keep it in mine, where it simply says, I ask God for strength that I might achieve. I was made weak that I might learn humbly to obey. I ask God for help that I might do greater things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I ask God for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I ask for power that I might have the praise of men I was given weakness that I might feel the need for God. I asked for all things that I might enjoy life. I was given life that I might enjoy all things. I got nothing that I asked for, but everything I hoped for. Almost despite myself, my unspoken prayers were answered and I, among all men, am most richly blessed. Today we're blessed because of who he is and his love towards us. So may the God of peace continue to bless you, keep you, and on this day, may you walk in a great witness. This we ask In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.